here is your homework on evaluating limits algebraically. We're not going to verify with the graph or table. We're just going to have an understanding of it algebraically right now. So what's the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared subtract 12 um, plus x subtract 12 x subtracted? First thing, um, you substitute in. I'm not going to do this for every question, but I'll do it here. So x as x approaches 3, just the numerator. So if I just look at the numerator and I plug in 3, it's 0. If I just look at the denominator, it's also 0. So this is indeterminate. That means that there's likely a hole here that I need to divide out. So to find that hole, I'm going to factor. So the numerator, to factor it, would be positive 4 and negative 3. And then the denominator, notice the hole that will divide out. Then what's left over, you substitute in, and you get your answer. Let's try that again. So I want to evaluate this limit. I'm not going to go through this work, but I want you to plug in. So plug in 2 into the top and bottom. I want you to see it will be 0 over 0 when you do that evaluation. So we're going to divide out the whole. To do that, we're going to factor. So factor out the denominator. So that's going to be uh, negative 2 and negative 7. Uh, notice that when you divide out the number you're left with in the numerator is 1. So 1 is in the numerator. Plug in 2 and 2 take away 7. So that's negative 1 fifth. Same thing here. Plug in negative 3 into the numerator and denominator and you do get indeterminate. It's 0 over 0. So we're going to factor the numerator we are going to factor the denominator and then divide out the whole. Now we're going to plug in again and that's negative 6 and that's negative 4. I don't need to reduce it down but it is 3 over 2. Uh, number 4, if you plug in 5 and if you plug in 5, I know you're going to trust me, that is 0 over 0. So there's some real good factoring going on here. So it's good practice to factor this. The numerator we're going to practice, uh, factor and practice by uh, grouping. So what do they have in common? So they have an x squared in common, and that's x subtract 5. In the denominator, it's 6, and that's x subtract 5. Because I know there's a hole, and I already see a common factor, I'm going to just go for it and assume that that might also be the one in the denominator. And if that's true, then x times 2x is 2x squared, and negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25, and then I just got to verify the middle term. So that's negative 10 and positive 5. So that's definitely negative 5, and it works. So I'm taking a common factor I saw and using it in the denominator, uh, to be able to make it a little bit quicker. So divide out that whole top and bottom. And what you're left with is the limit as x approaches 5. I have x squared plus 6 is what I'm left with in the numerator and 2x plus 5 in the denominator. So if you plug in 5, I think that's 31, plug in 5 and that's 15. So I get 31 over 15. Number 5. Can you evaluate a limit algebraically? So step one, you would plug in negative two and plug in negative two. And I want you to see that when you plug in negative two, if the answer is not zero, then we wouldn't go any further. But it is zero. So the numerator and denominator, so we're going to factor. So we're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to write down the limit. Oh, come back here. Don't forget the limit notation like I did here. So the first thing I'm going to write down is limit notation. And I'm only going to undo the limit notation when it's the very last step. So limit as x approaches negative 2, and I'm going to factor. So the numerator, I'm going to factor by grouping. So they have an x squared in common. That's 3x minus 1. And then these have a negative 4. And that leaves me with... A negative and a negative gives me positive 3x minus 1. So I have that common factor. That common factor I'm going to write down again and make an assumption. That's likely what's being divided out because I know it's 0 over 0. 
if that's the case, 3x times x is 3x squared, and negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Make sure the middle term works. So negative 1x, negative 6, um, that's positive. So sorry, sorry, this should be 3 plus. So, because it's plus, and it does work with as plus, it's not 3x minus 1 that's being divided out, so I need to go further. So the limit as x approaches negative uh, 2, we do have a 3x minus 1, and then x squared subtract 4. Well, x squared subtract 4 can be factored further. So again, I'm being careful. You've got to write down the limit, then write it down. So we have 3x minus 1 and then x plus 2, x subtract 2. Again, 3x plus 1, not the same factor, and x plus 2. So the whole is at x plus 2 that I'm going to divide out. Then, and I would know better because negative 2, if you plug into here, gives you that 0 over 0 that you're dividing out. Negative 2 to 3x plus 1 would not give you the 0 over 0 that you need. All right, what's left over? Plug in negative 2, so that's negative 6, take away 1, that's negative 7, that's negative 4, the denominator negative 6 plus 1, and you have your answer. So that's negative 28 over 5, which is a good answer. Can you find a limit using some algebra? Step 1, plug in 1 and it's 0, plug in 1 and it's 0. Now, can you find the 0 to divide out? So, I'm going to work backwards here. If positive 1 leads me to 0 over 0, then x subtract 1 must be the factor, top and bottom, so that when I plug in, I get 0 over 0. So, x times 3x is 3x squared and negative 1 times positive 5. Same thing here. x times 2x and negative 1 times 7. Make sure the middle term matches, which it does. So working backwards from what the limit is approaching, if you know that when you plug in gives you 0 over 0, use that and write down the factor of that 0 to help you factor it a little bit more efficiently. So x subtract 1 divides out. Then I'm just going to substitute in of what's left over. So when you plug in 1, you get 8 over 9. Number 7, this is a difference of cubes. So I'd have, an, in terms of memorizing the formula, I would memorize this. What number makes this 0? That's positive 3 cubed, take away 27. And you can see that here, that when you plug in 3, it gives you that. So there's your 0. It can even come from your limit notation. And then divide into it. So 1x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and negative 27. And then you have what you need. So the limit as x approaches 3, and then the numerator and denominator. So we have x subtract 3 and x squared plus 3x plus 9. So that comes from what's left over. In the denominator, there will also be an x subtract 3 that's going to divide out. And then x times 5x and negative 3 times 2 is what matches the ends. Look at the middle. Negative 15 plus 2, that matches. So notice x subtract 3 is going to divide out. Now we can just plug in. So plug in 3, that's 999, nine, nine, that's 27. Or 999. Nine. Yeah. So plug in, sorry. That's 999, nine, nine. that's 27. Plug 3 into the bottom, that's uh, 15, plus 2, that's 17. 8. This is, again, uh, 
sum of cubes. I'm going to use this as a fact that's going to help me. If I plug in negative a half to the top, it's going to give me zero. And negative a half on the bottom is going to give me zero. So I'm going to use that negative a half when I uh, divide in to see what's left over. So it's 8x cubed, 0x squared, 0x and 1. Uh, that's just half. So uh, half of 8 and it's negative. Half of 4, and this one's positive because the two negatives. And then half of 2, and that's negative 1. And there's your remainder of 0. So we write down the limit as x approaches negative a half. We have x plus a half, and then we have 8x squared subtract 4x plus 2. In the denominator, we're going to factor out, uh, what do they have in common? 2 and an x. And you have 4x. squared minus 1. This is now a difference of squares, the denominator. And that is 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Now, it doesn't look it, but these x plus a half and 2x plus 1, they give you the same 0. So I can rewrite this as one half, x plus 1 half. I can divide out a factor out of 2. So if I factor out a 2 so that you can see it match, that would make this 4. This would then just be x plus a half when you factor out a 2 or divide out by 2. So if I go 4 and these cross out, substitute in. So now you can plug in negative a half. And if you plug in negative a half and simplify it, you get the answer 3 over 2. All right, turn the page over. Now, on this page, we're going to practice what is using the conjugate so that I can simplify it. So if I plug in 16, it's indeterminate. So I'm going to write down this, but I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of x plus 4. So there's the conjugate with the square root. So identify the square root and then write that binomial with an opposite sign to make the conjugate. In the denominator, root x times root x is x and negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. In the numerator, you already have an x minus 16. The root x plus 4 we're not going to multiply it out. We're just going to put them beside each other. Then the x subtract 16 divides out. Then you substitute in, and you get the answer 8. So if you plug in 16, the square root of 16 is 4 plus 4, and the answer is 8. Right, let's try it again. So if I plug in 2, the square root of 64 take away 8, or 2 take away 2, you can see it's indeterminate. So we're going to do the conjugate. So the square root of 32x plus 8, top and bottom. So then what does that limit become when you do the conjugate? So the numerator becomes root 32x and root 32x is 32x. Negative 8 times 8 is negative 64. The denominator, I'm just going to write down beside each other. Now nothing matches yet. And that's because I need to factor the numerator a little bit more. So what do they have in common? Obviously a 32. That gives me the x minus 2. I can now divide out that whole. And now I can plug in 2. So the answer is 32 
plug in 2 here, and you get 16, right? 36, oh yeah. And that answer would be 2 if you want to go all the way through. Number 11, can you use the conjugate? Here we go. So what is the conjugate? So step 1 is plug in negative 2. Mm-hmm, 0. Plug in negative 2, and notice it simplifies to 0 over 0. That's what we're looking for. That's called indeterminate. So what technique are we going to use so we can find the limit? And that's using the conjugate. So that's plus 3. That's root x plus 11 plus 3, top and bottom. I'm going to write the limit notation again. The denominator, I'm going to multiply out. So that's first times first. That's just x plus 11. So root x plus 11, root x plus 11. They undo and leave you with x plus 11. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. The numerator, I'm not going to mess with. They're going to go beside each other. And then notice that 11 take away 9 is 2. This is x plus 2. So they're done. And then we just substitute in. So plug in negative 2. The square root of 9 plus 3. So the square root of 9 is uh, 3 plus 3. So the limit there is 6. Step one again, plug in zero. And if you plug in zero, you get zero over zero. Next step is to do the conjugate. That's one plus the square root of x plus one, top and bottom. So we're gonna write down the limit as x approaches zero. The numerator, we're gonna multiply out. So one times one, and then root x and root x. Now it's gonna be negative with parentheses, x plus one. So they change the order of where the square root is. So be careful as you multiply it out. That subtract sign belongs to the x and to the 1. The denominator we're just going to write down beside each other. I want you to notice now that the numerator is 1 take away 1, which is 0, and that leaves me just with x. So these x's divide out, and now I can substitute in. So I have a 1 left in the numerator. If I plug in 0, this becomes 1 plus 1, 2 times 2, and the limit here is 1 quarter. Oh, and that x is a negative. So when I divide it out, you're left with negative 1, because that negative belongs to the x as well. All right, two more. So step 1 is to plug in negative 3 and make sure it's indeterminate which it is, then you multiply by the conjugate, which is the square root of 16 subtract 3x plus 5. The square root of 16 subtract 3x plus 5, top and bottom. We write down the limit notation, and then the way we go. So in the denominator, first times first is 16 subtract 3x, and last times last is negative 25. In the numerator, I just put them beside each other and do not multiply them out. When I look here at the denominator, there's going to be a little more factoring still to, to do so that you can see it. So we have x plus 3, the square root of 16, subtract 3x plus 5. In the denominator, this is 16 take away 25. So this is negative 3x and negative 9. So I'm going to divide out the negative 3. So when I multiply it out, it will equal what this is. So 16 take away 25 is negative 9. This is negative 3x subtract 9. So is this. It's just factored, so I can factor out the 0. And now plug in negative 3. So when I now plug in negative 3, I get 5 plus 5 is 10, and then that's over negative 3. All right, one last one left. Number 14. Step 1 is to plug in and make sure it is indeterminate. So uh, 66 take away 2 is 64. The square root of 64 is 8, and 8 take away 8 0, and the bottom is 0, so away we go. The conjugate, 11x subtract 2 plus 8. The square root of 11x subtract 2 plus 8, top and bottom. The limit as x approaches 6, 
the numerator I'm going to multiply out. So first times first is 11x subtract 2. Last times last is negative 64. The denominator, we're just going to put them beside each other. Next, we're going to combine like terms. That's 11x subtract 66. Not going to mess with the denominator. Notice the numerator can still factor further. So if I factor the numerator, take out an 11. That's 11 minus 6. Now, 6 subtract x is actually their opposite factors. So for opposite factors, you're left with negative 1 when you do the dividing. So now I'm going to plug in 6. I have negative 11, and when I plug in 6 here, I get 16. So that's the square root of 64, 8 plus 8, which is 16, and you have your answer. All right, some heavy lifting with algebra, but you can do this. Can you evaluate a limit if there's a hole? That means can you factor out the hole? Can you use the conjugate? to be able to divide out the whole and then substitute it. Great job. I'm proud of you for doing your work. I know it's not easy, but you did it, and I'm proud of you. Mr. G Math over and out, and until uh, next time.